Hey everybody, this is Julie Wee PT. Today I'm going to be answering a question that I get a lot, which is, isn't your approach with the piston, which is that up and down dynamic movement in unison of the diaphragm, pelvic floor, and the deep abdominal muscles, isn't it really just a kegel with breath? And I think that falls short of describing what it is I'm trying to suggest. I'm really hoping to steer folks towards a more functional and relationship-based approach that the pelvic floor just happens to be a part of. So let me answer first by trying to discuss the language that we have surrounding pelvic health. The word Kegel has become synonymous with pelvic health and a healthy pelvic floor. And it's been offered for decades as both the beginning and the end of what you need to do if you have any issues or want to prevent any issues with your pelvic health. So much so that it's actually really difficult to communicate a new concept because Kegel is the only word or concept that most women know. And when I go out and I teach, I often ask folks to tell me what words they think of when I say the word Kegel. And the words that I tend to get back are things like hold or clench, and I actually sometimes hear back pelvic floor. And that's because Kegel sort of equals pelvic floor. We even call them your Kegel muscles. So I understand why folks have no frame of reference really for anything pelvic floor related that does not include a Kegel. Thus, Kegel with a breath is how folks have tried to absorb this new idea, which I really appreciate and I totally understand. Um, however, what I'm trying to communicate by using a different word is to talk about more than just the pelvic floor and whether or not it's weak or strong. Um, I'm not really trying to push a new word, I'm trying to push a new concept. And um, an example of how this idea that there's really, that women only understand one option that they have for their pelvic health, which is the Kegel, is that we're seeing a lot of women who are runners who actually hold a pelvic floor contraction or they hold a Kegel while they're running. We don't do this with any other muscle group. We don't ask you to hold your quads tight while you're running or your glutes. Instead, we ask for those muscles to move through a range, through their excursion. They should shorten and lengthen as you're running. And a piston encourages that excursion with every breath. An excursion, that shortening and lengthening, is how we absorb or control impact. And I also hope that women will learn how to be task specific in how they're activating that piston system. Holding your pelvic floor while you're running, for example, is not task specific. It's all or nothing. And that's the other thing that I think that Kegel has sort of built into a lot of women. It's either on, all, or nothing. It's off. And that's not really how the pelvic floor works. The pelvic floor should lengthen and shorten just like your quads while you're running. So those are some of the distinctions that I think I'm trying to make between what I'm suggesting versus um, a Kegel and breathing on top of it or breathing on, alongside it. I want that system to work in unison. I want it to go through an excursion. It should be balancing the forces and pressures inside the abdomen and the pelvis to support our continence, our movement, our performance, and it really needs to be task specific in how you're asking your pelvic floor to participate. So let me take you through an analogy real quick that I hope will help to further clarify the distinctions that I'm making. So if you would please hold your arm at your side and just relax it. But when I'm, what I'd like you to do is not move your elbow, your shoulder, your hand, or your wrist. And now in that relaxed position, just make your biceps contract. No movement. That's hard, right? And you know how to make your bicep work. Your brain is really connected to it. You haven't injured it as far as we know. But that's essentially what we're asking when we ask women to perform a Kegel or a pelvic floor contraction. It's hard. And the pelvic floor and the bicep are both muscle tissue, so they should activate the same way. But the difference is, is that most women don't really know where it is, they don't feel connected to the pelvic floor, and we now understand they haven't built a brain map for it yet. So that's a real challenge. And then they, you know, the, the brochure and the blog and the internet all told me I should be able to activate like that, and it's scary when you can't do it. Or, and then they might even get evaluated and told they're weak because this is what was evaluated. And they shouldn't do X, Y, and Z until they get it strong. But the only thing they've ever been offered is do this over and over again until it's strong enough. And that's a scary, difficult thing. Um, but, the, but is your bicep weak or are you just having trouble connecting with it? It's a big question. 
Now move your uh, sorry your elbow into 90 degrees and now try that contraction. Okay, that's a little bit easier. It's still not gangbusters, but you can actually make that happen a little bit. So what we've done there is applied a concept we apply elsewhere in the body, which is that muscles work best or are more available for activation when they're in their mid-range. And the muscles of the pelvic floor are no exception. As so, same with the rest of the postural system. They all work best in their mid-range. But get this, please. Mid-range is just that. It's a range. And it's somewhere between the extremes. We've sort of called that mid-range for our postural system neutral alignment. And I think everyone has a sweet spot within that range that optimizes the availability of the muscles of the postural system to activate best. And we sort of demonstrated that optimization in, in our example here with our bicep at 90 degrees. So that's part of what I'm trying to communicate beyond just a kegel with breath. I'm also suggesting that using the system in a position that optimizes its availability gives us more of an idea of what it might be capable of before we conclude that it's too weak for X, Y, and Z. Now, next step, let's squeeze your hand while you're trying to make that bicep contraction. That's really different. Now you can really make it go. That is a, because what we did was we used your muscles in relationship with teammates or partners that helped enhance its activation. The brain really gets relationships more than isolated muscle contraction. And we also did it in an alignment that optimized those relationships. So we just went from a wow, it's so weak, to a hot stuff contraction in just a couple of minutes because we changed the way we access the system and we treated it as a system, okay? And if I really wanted to kick up your bicep, I'd ask you to actually participate in a task like lifting a grocery bag. If the brain gets relationships, it also really gets and understands functional tasks. A partnership of muscles, relationships, acting together in a task is ultimately what we want to create and what the brain does best, okay? The bicep didn't do this alone and the pelvic floor doesn't act alone either. And that's where we really need to broaden our understanding in both pelvic health issues, but also in understanding that the pelvic floor is a partner with a lot of other muscles in participation in other movements and performance. Okay, so this is what I'm suggesting when I talk about the piston, a functional relationship-based approach that includes the pelvic floor and the diaphragm. Not easy to communicate with one word, but this, trying to contract here, is very different than this and this. And just saying Kegel plus breath doesn't quite cut Cut it, in my humble opinion, primarily because I think that leaves off the role of the brain's love of relationships and function as the best way to pr promote an appropriate muscle pattern and to enhance activation in a system. So I hope that's helped to clarify and I really appreciate your questions. So please keep sending me um, your, your ideas and your questions and I'll keep trying to answer them just like this. Take care everybody and have a great day.